Hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode of She's Doing All Right. My name is Sarah Carter. I'm your host for this show. And today we are talking about quarter two and how we are going to do things differently this quarter. We're going to take the good from the last quarter and move into the second quarter, doing even better things for our goals and our ultimate theme of the year. And with that, happy April. We are officially in the second quarter of 2023. That feels so crazy to say. It just went by very fast for me. Um, but also a little bit, I was a little disheartened when I looked back through my goals list of what I wanted to accomplish in the first quarter, because on one hand, I thought I didn't set big enough goals. And on the other hand, I didn't really reach the goals I wanted. That is what's kind of inspired today's episode. Every quarter, I've talked about this a lot, or every year, sorry, I talk about this a lot with the theme of the year. I set a theme that I want to live in and embody for the entire season. And this year's theme was authenticity. Now, I do a little subcategory of that in order to keep me in more like bite-sized, approachable goals, I guess. So every quarter, I set a sub-theme. This quarter, based on my results of the last quarter, is self-respect. I have been sitting with this and thinking about this for the last couple of days on how can I practice and build self-respecting habits. And as I've been looking at all of this, I've decided that there are so many ways and areas that we can do this. How do you show yourself respect in your current life? I think a lot of us see self-respect as how we let other people treat us, but we don't dive into how we treat ourselves. And that can be a little bit um, unbalanced because out of those two relationships, out of the relationship with other people or the relationship we have with ourselves, I'd say the latter is far more important. And so we are very good at like setting up boundaries. That's a big thing in our society right now is talking about boundaries and don't let the toxic people in or cut toxic people out of your life. But what if you're the toxic person in your life? What if you and your whole life right now is simply the manifestation of your bad habits, your lack of trying, your lack of self-accountability. Yeah, that sounds really harsh, but this this is all how I talk to myself right now. Just looking at ourselves and being very aware of what am I doing to show respect to myself? Because other people, I'm demanding that they treat me a specific way, Am I holding myself to that same standard? The first area that we really can build good habits and focus on self-respect, this is my biggest struggle, and it's with our time. How do we respect our time? It's the one thing that we don't get back. We cannot make more of it. We can't hack at anything to get that back. And Yet it's what we waste the most, I think. We don't really spend it wisely. At least I know that I don't. I spend a few minutes very wisely, very in tune. I'll spend hours with my son or put my phone away for a few hours and it's great. But then bedtime comes around, baby goes to bed, baby goes to daycare, and we've got a different situation. So for me, it's very frustrating because I have a list of things that I really do want to get done. And they're important to me, but then I don't actually do them. And that is very disrespectful to myself, like to the future version of me who deserves a really beautiful home or who deserves the recognition for the work she's putting in. She's not going to get it because current me is not putting the work in. Current me is not doing what she needs to do to take care of the home. And that is the first biggest thing for me is... Um, showing myself respect by respecting my time. And here we are at day three, and I've already had a few slip ups, but I think accountability and grace are very important, important with this. But quick sidebar with that, grace should not be justification. Showing yourself grace is saying, oh, I just caught myself scrolling on my phone and I was supposed to put that away because I don't want to waste time. I actually want to use my time productively. I'm going to put my phone away now. Justification is, it's okay. You've had a rough morning or maybe you're just not feeling it today. You know what? Start over tomorrow. 
it's no big deal. You're working hard. No, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. This is all talking to me, by the way. If you feel different about yourself, then that's good. No one else can change that relationship. Um, this is just my perspective on my time right now. Moving on to the second self-respect me habit that I am working on is that we can all work on is our relationship with our body. Do you feel like you're respecting your body when you talk about it, when you are drinking lots of alcohol, eating lots of sugar, not moving? Probably not. But we can respect our bodies by getting up and doing some movement every day, maybe meditating, getting outside and fresh air every single day should be the bare minimum. Uh, wearing sunscreen is something I have been so good at and then I just have not been in the last few weeks. But that's a big one for me. I want to protect and respect my skin and my body and all that it does for me. So the least I can do is wear sun protective clothing or sunscreen. And my least favorite is getting enough sleep. I love sleep, but I love naps. I don't like to go to bed. Um, and I will stay up for very many hours at night when my son has gone to bed, my husband goes to bed, and I sit on my phone and scroll. And that is so not good for my body. That is so disrespectful to my body because she's tired. She's begging for rest. And I just, I have FOMO. I'm going to miss out on information. Um, and that's, that part comes from a very sheltered childhood I've just tuned into. And I thought it was very interesting, though. The last way that we're going to really focus on respecting our body the next few weeks or months is being hyper aware of what we are consuming with our mind. Respecting my mind means honoring the valuable and creative space that my mind is. We all have this. Our brains are so magical and so like, valuable. That's really the biggest word for me right now is valuable and creative. And if I had like an art museum that people could come into and sit there and get inspired, I wouldn't be letting true crime documentaries in. Not that I really watch that, but I know a lot of people that do. Um, I wouldn't be letting TikTok and Instagram scrolling in. It'd be a phone-free zone, you know, because what I need to be inspired by, it's already entered my brain. I don't need to get online to be inspired. That's an excuse and I'm going to get distracted, which is going to take away from my, cons my inspiration. If I'm trying to respect my mind, I'm going to be hyper aware of my thoughts. And this is something that we should all be very, very aware of. A study found that an average person has about 12,000 to 60,000 thoughts per day. And of those thousands of thoughts, 80% were negative and 95% were exactly the same repetitive thoughts as the day before. Living on autopilot, thinking the same unhelpful thoughts every single day does not feel like a sign of respect to me. At the very least, I feel like we could try to make room for as many positive thoughts so that when we are in that 95% of our thoughts that are repetitive from the day before, they're good. They're doing something better, right? Maybe we can take those 80% of negative thoughts down to 60. That's not even half of our thoughts being negative or positive, and that would still be an improvement. I only recently did my vision board for the year, and I really am hoping to and one of my other goals for this quarter is to sit and focus on that every single day. Just take a look at the pictures and imagine what I was imagining when I selected that picture. What does it, what is it a symbol for, for me? And then also going through my journals and writing out like, what do I need to, what do I want and how am I going to get there? Because I think we're good at writing what we want. And then we get caught up in the, how do we get there part? And it gets intimidating and then we, we stop. I really think that the way we treat our bodies, mind, time, all of that are going to have a longer lasting effect than what boundaries we set with other people. And I think that prioritizing and shifting the lens on how are we respecting ourselves rather than letting, like, or focusing on how other people respect us, it's going to kind of be full circle anyways, because if we respect ourselves, we're not letting other people treat us a way that we're not going to treat ourselves, you know? So I would love to hear your thoughts on this. And if you have any ways that you're going to change how you respect yourself in the next quarter, please head over to Instagram, 
she's doing all right. And you can go ahead and leave a comment down below one of the posts. And if you have a different theme for this quarter or a different focus, I would love to know what that is because we should talk about it. We should be able to support each other and hold each other accountable, call each other out when we see each other not stepping up and living our best lives for ourselves. That is all for today. It's a short one, short and sweet, hopefully. I really appreciate your support and I will see you in the next episode. Have a great rest of your day.